are watching Faith World TV. Faith World TV, changing the world with the Word of God. God bless you. It's good to see you again. Thank you for joining us as we worship the Lord. The Bible says in His presence is fullness of joy. The Bible says the Word of God is living and powerful. So I pray as we expose ourselves to the living Word, that our eyes of understanding will be enlightened, that God will open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of his law so that we might walk worthy of God, pleasing him in all things, increasing in the knowledge of God and fruitful in every good work. I also pray that as the, as the law speaks through me, for the word of God is living and powerful, that it, it will bring renewal to our mind, that the word of God will transform us from within. I also pray that God will revive our bodies in Jesus' mighty name. Maybe some of you that listen to me, some of you might, might be in pain, might have a physical infirmity, whatever it might be. I pray in the name of Jesus that through the mercy of God, that the word of God will quicken your body in Jesus' name. The Bible says that they came to hear him and to be healed of their disease. And I pray as you listen to the word of God, that the word of God will bring healing. The Bible says they shall know the truth and the truth will set them free. As we listen to the truth, as we hear the truth, that it will set us free in our minds and in our bodies in Jesus' mighty name. That by his stripes we are healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you're joining us for the first time, welcome to our Heroes Hall of Fame series, part 101. And this is a, a study that we, uh, uh, we have from the book of Hebrews which is a biblical reference, Hebrews 11, verse 32, talking about uh, the stories of the men of faith mentioned in Hebrews 11, 32, um, the, uh, the story of, stories of faith of Gideon, um, Barak, and now we are Samson. Actually, we are uh, on the final um, section on Samson, and this is our sixth week on, on learning about Samson. So uh, uh, we, I'm going to give a quick recap uh, so that we, 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 we come into play on what we'll be talking about today. Today's title is called, God Can Turn Your Mess Into a Miracle. Now, that's amazing. So uh, if you're watching live, you could record it. Uh, and if you're watching on Tudo, please do uh, share it with others in Jesus' name. So previously, we learned how Samson started well, you know, uh, but he, during the middle of his ministry, he began to make choices that negatively, negatively affected his ministry. We learned that his strength did not come from his long hair, but came from his commitment to God. We also been learning what caused Samson's downfall, why he fizzled out of his ministry. And we said because of his neglect of fellowship with God. Because the, um, God has given us this example, you know, to us believers, because um, Samson is an example, it's a picture of a believer walking with God. But he began to fizz out, he dropped out, he backstilled and And one of the reasons is because he neglected his fellowship with God, his devotion with God. That is the reading of the word of God, daily and prayer. And also he neglected fellowship with God's people. How many people today are, be, are becoming more and more cold towards fellowship? You know, and when you say, if you're a Christian, say, well, I don't need to go to church to be a Christian. You know, you believe they lie because Jesus himself instituted the church. It's the one that commanded us to go to church. He went to church. So um, if you don't have a place, pray that God leads you to a place. Uh, and one thing again we learn about Samson is that he loved the world. So we learn from Samson never to cuddle sin, never to think that we can handle sin because it, it will bite us in the end. We also learn from the story of Samson that um, Going out with an unbelieving spouse can lead to your downfall. Samson twice, you know, went out with an unbelieving woman. And God already forbade them not to have anything to do with those nations, ungodly nations around them. But he did, and it led to his downfall. They affected him mentally, emotionally, physically, and even led to his early death. And I've seen that in my ministry, you know, when you think you can convert, you can do it. And then it, it leads to you know, overwhelming burden, depression, you know, sickness, and even early death. So, you know, beware of that. 
God has our best in mind, our best interest in mind. We also learned that we all have weaknesses, and Satan knows it. Satan, um, Satan knew that um, Samson had a weakness. They could overcome Satan. The Philistines could overcome Satan in the battlefield, but they knew that he had his weakness in the bedroom. And they placed someone, uh, the, uh, Delilah, to bring, to bring him down. So we need to stay away. Since we know as believers, we also have weaknesses. We need to stay away from people, from places, you know, from persons that can stimulate our weaknesses, that can influence us to sin. And also we learned that sin can be persuasive. This is very important. You know, because there's that time in life we have this bombardment of uh, of evil thoughts. It could be thoughts of anxiety, fear, worry, or, or feelings of, of lust, envy, you know, um, uh, and jealousy. You know, and we need to be aware that Satan is able to project these thoughts in our mind over and over again until we give in and we feel that that is the way I am. You know, I'm meant to, to, to be bent towards this way. This is why I am, I can't change. But that's a lie. The Bible says that blessed is the man, James 1, 12, that endures temptation, okay? That perseveres and doesn't give in. So God wrote Samson's story down for us so that, so that we can learn not to fall into his message, not to become a casualty of the devil. So in today's message, we're going to learn something new, something about God's graciousness. We learn that our God is a miracle-working God, a forgiving God, a God of many chances. But first of all, let's look at the effects of Samson's sin. In Judges 16, 21, we read, if you go by my reading from the New Living Translation, it said, so the Philistines captured him, gushed out his eyes. They took him to Gaza where he was bound with bronze chains and forced to grind grain in prison. So the first lesson is sin blinds you. Sin finds you. Sin binds you and grinds you. You see, Samson was blinded by the pleasures of sin. He thought he could get away with it. He thought he could, you know, he could, he could handle it. He thought, well, I'll never be caught. Uh, you know, uh, you know um, nothing will happen to me. But Samson learned the hard way. You know, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 11, that when a crime is not punished quickly, people feel it is safe to do wrong. And that's why maybe, you know, you, you know, you listen to me, some of you might be living in sin, but you say, well, nothing's happened to me. I'm not caught. But I tell you, the Bible says in Numbers 32, verse 23, be sure your sin will find you out. Okay? We'll find you out. And you will experience the consequences of sin, just like Samson did. You know, no one is, no one's in, no one is immune from the judgment of sin. No one is so f special that they will not face the consequences of sin, which will be the guilt of your conscience, the shame, fear, you know, broken heart. Just like Adam and Eve did when they sinned, they felt shame, guilt, and fear. And, and today when we sin, that we experience that broken health, broken families. You saw that Adam's family was broken. There was death in the family because of sin. Hot children that can be, you know, scarred for life. You know, we experience betrayed trust, damaged witness, damaged reputation. I remember that we always receive the wages of sin, and Satan is the one that meets out these wages. For Samson was his eyes. So we need to be careful and not play with sin, you know, and 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 fear the Lord. But thank God this message, this message of hope that even though Samson blew it, you know, our God is a God of many chances. The Bible says in Judges 16:22 that. But before long, his hair began to grow back again. And Samson prayed unto the Lord. Judges 16, we read it from verse 28 to 30, reading from the NLT. He said, then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me again. Oh God, please strengthen me. I think most of us, you know, less time of you, less you need to pray to God. Say, Lord, remember me. If you fall short, if you, you've seen, you need to come back to me. I said, Lord, remember, and he will remember you. Then Samson put his hand uh, um, to, onto, onto the, onto, on, on the two center pillars that held up the temple. Pushing against them with both hands, he prayed, Let me die with the Philistines. And the, uh, and, and the temple crushed down the Philistines, rulers, and other people. So he killed more people when he died than he had during his entire lifetime. So 
though Samson blew it, Samson made mistakes, made the wrong decisions, wrong choices. But when he repented, God forgave him and still used him to do this miraculous deed that he killed more Philistines in his weakness than when he was alive. So what's the lesson? God still wants to use us even after we've messed up. You see, we all blow it and we shouldn't disqualify ourselves. God knows we are not perfect. He still wants to use us. He wants our availability and our yielding to him. We make ourselves available to him. God will use us despite ourselves. So another lesson is don't look to yourself or people for strength. You see, Samson was alone in that prison, alone with the Philistines, but he looked up to God. And God is faithful. God will never despise a broken spirit and a contrary spirit. Psalm 34, verse 18 says, The Lord is near the broken heart. Maybe you're broken hearted. You, you know, you are down. God is near you. Even as your, the word is going out, God is near you. Psalm 51, 17 says, God will never despise a contrary heart. Okay? And Psalm 121 Verse 1 to it talks about, you know, the psalm is saying, I'll look unto the mountains and to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from. Meaning, you see, we can't get help from people, from government, because they, they, can, they, 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 they can fail us. And even if they, they, if they, they are those who are uh, lawyer friends, there are certain things they cannot do that only God can do. And that's what we need to look unto God, you know, when we're in difficulties. You know, and we should not look too much to ourselves, to our weaknesses, our failures. And that's our problem. We look too much to our feelings instead of looking upward in faith to God. Uh, because when we look to him, you know, our strength is made perfect in weakness. For example, um, Moses and um, Gideon. You know, they were, they, they were looking to themselves. When God called out Moses, you know, at the age of 80, he said, Lord, you see, I, I'm weak. I, I cannot speak well. I, I stammer, you know, I stutter. You know, Lord, send somebody else. You know, and also Gideon, when God called him, Gideon said, Lord, you know, I, I am the least in my family. My family is the least in their clan, you know. And God said, all you need is me. That's all you need. That's all we need. All we need is God, that's why we need to look, look up to him. In the New Testament, we see Paul, you know, um, echoing the same thing. In 2 Corinthians 12, um, 9 to 10, the New King James Version says, And he said to me, God is saying to you, and God is saying to you today, He said, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses. So listen to this. Maybe at this moment, you might be, you might be you know, going through a physical infirmity, or you're in reproach, or in a need, or you're being persecuted, or in distress. God says, do not be afraid. All you need is me, because when you are weak, then I am strong. Hallelujah. For his strength is made perfect in weakness and one thing we need to also um, take on board very very important lessons is do not believe the lies of the devil because it's when we are down the enemy swoops in you know and uh, and bombard us with lies of condemnation and to give up so we should not believe the lies of the satan that we've passed self by even though yes we've made mistakes we, you know we've done things that are self-inflicted but but we should not believe the lies of the devil that says we've we've passed self by date you know we have expired you know we, we are a wreck we are worthless we are finished god can no longer use us it's over that's a lie those are lies from the peace of hell no matter how far we've fallen no matter how far we've sunk in life Jesus is able to forgive us. It's Psalm 86, 5, I believe, says, God is good and ready to forgive. You see, God is able to forgive us and terminate all the work of righteousness, work of darkness in our lives. For that is why he has come. First John 3, it says, the Son of God is manifest to destroy the works of the devil. You see, the devil wants us to stay defeated, discouraged. He wants us to stay down in despair. He wants us to, to stay down destitute, depressed. You see, maybe you are depressed. 
go on or discourage. That is the work of the devil. He wants us to lo- he wants to lock us in, in, in that prison uh, uh, of bitter to be defeated. But God wants us to repent when we sin. Just like Samson knew he did wrong, he called upon God, he repented, and God came true for him. And God will come true for you when you truly repent. When we, we sin, we call upon him. And he will answer his promise in Psalm 50, 50, Psalm 50 15. You know, he said, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer you. That's the God we said because he loves us. Are you in trouble? Have you caught upon? You say, well, I've caught, but nothing happened. Uh, the Bible says we need to keep on praying. He said, look, 18, one, men ought to pray and not to faint. God wants to test you whether you truly believe or whether you're fear, whether you're Christians. God is not a... a um, a, um, uh, a lucky machine that you see, a slot machine, you need to keep coming to, and God wants you to see whether you truly believe. Amen? You need to keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. Now, if Samson had believed the lie of the devil to give up, imagine, because he was blinded, he was already blinded, he was disabled, you know, and I'm sure it's hard, the lies of Satan coming to him say, give up, you are finished, you are useless, you know, you know but he didn't give up. You know, he didn't give up. He chose to believe and he called upon God and God wrought a great miracle to him. Another example is David, you know. David had believed, the King David, who had believed the lie of the devil to give up. Remember when there was a time in David's life when he came back home, he saw that his home was rampage, uh, and his troops, his his family, and the families of his troops were already uh, um, in captivity. They were were, were kidnapped, you know, uh, every place was burned down, and they just wept and went, and his men, you know, were beginning to speak speak against him and thinking of stoning him. I'm blaming him. But what did David do? He will have given up and said, oh, let him just die. And that's many people have believed the life of the devil and committed suicide, you know, because the devil has lied. And maybe, maybe you are listening to me and you are, you are thinking of, you know, giving up or heading your life. Do not believe that lie. Do not, that's the lie. The devil wants you to give up, but God has a plan and purpose for you. And, and you must hold on and believe and not give up. If, if, if David had given up, you know, he, he would have lost everything. The Bible says, David strengthened himself in the Lord. That's, you can find that story in 1 Samuel chapter 30. And he, and he asked the Lord and God gave him direction. And he recovered his wife. He recovered everything, even much more. And God is able to do much more for you. You see, our God is a God of many chances, you know. So maybe you feel you've been cut down by the devil. Samson was cut down, but the Bible says in, in Job chapter 14, 79, he said, for there's hope for a tree, if it is cut down, that it will sprout again. And that its tender shoots will not cease. Though its root may grow old in the earth, its stone may die in the ground. Maybe it's not as if you finished to the world. But when you are alive, there's hope. And yet at the skin of water, it will bud and bring forth branches like a plant. You see, just like Samson, our Lord was cut down. He was nailed to the cross. And the, and the world thought it was finished. The religious early thought it was finished. The Romans thought it was finished. The, the Satan and demons thought he was finished. But by the power of the Holy Ghost, he was raised again from the dead. Because on the cross, he smashed the devil's head. On the cross, he wiped out the handwriting that was against us of accusation, requirements of the Lord that was against us, that was contrary to us. Yes, he defeated Satan and his demons on the cross. You know, he over, with overwhelming victory on the cross, he died in weakness. But on that cross, he bruised the head of the Satan and dealt an everlasting blow to sin, death, and Satan. You see, God is able to raise you up as long as you are willing to look up to him in faith, no matter how you suck in life, no matter how bad or how dire your situation is, God wants to lift you up. You see, God wants you to finish well. You see, the Christian race, uh, it's not a sprint, it's not 100 meters dash, you know, it, it, it's not 100 meters race, it is a marathon. And sometimes during that long way, we may stumble, you know, we may falter, you know, our, weary, our, our steps may be weary, but we have a savior who lifts up, who is there with us. Okay, God, God wants you to finish the race well. 
God does not want us to resign, to defeat and give up and say, poor me. Why? Because you are a child of, you are born again, you are a child of God and Christ lives in you. Christ, the hope of glory. The Bible says, a just man falls sometimes but gets up. God wants you to get up. Get up from that slumber of that, uh, of that state of, of depression, that prison. of Get up in the name of Jesus. I command you to get up in Jesus' name. Come out from that spirit of depression. He said, it's replace the spirit of depression with the garment of praise. God wants you to rejoice in him. In the mighty name of Jesus. Proverbs 24, 16. Mark that. God, yeah, you may fall, you may stumble. We all stumble various people. God wants you to get up and keep going. God wants you to finish the race well. In Job chapter 8, verse 7, it said, Though your beginning was small, New King James Version, your latter hand will increase abundantly. That's God's promise for you. You know, God was able to turn David's life around, Samson's life, and God is able to turn yours around. Ecclesiastics chapter 7, verse 8 says, The end of a thing is better than its beginning thereof. Okay? Amen. You see, Yes, you may falter. You may have lost stuff. You see, at the end of life, when one dies at one's funeral, people don't talk about, the, you know, your, the, uh, your cash, the amount of cash you have, clothes, your career, you know. They don't talk about that, uh, about those things, you know. They talk about what kind of person you are, the quality of your life, of your faith, what kind of person you are, you, you are as a father, as a, as, as a, a, a mother, as a husband, as a wife, as a brother. You know, what kind of person do you want to want people to remember, um, uh, rem, uh, remember you for? And that's what you need to think about. You need to get up and live well and live a legacy, good legacy. Hallelujah. And God will help you. Amen. 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 Samson finished well. You see, yes, he made me well. He finished well. He killed. He was willing to die for his people. He was willing to die at the expense of killing thousands of Philistines. He killed more. He wasn't thinking about himself. So get up and stop focusing on yourself. There's, there's someone who says, I think it's correct, and Booth says, you see, when you look within, you'll be distressed. When you look out in the world like the world today, you'll be depressed. But when you look up to God, you will be at rest. Yes, those whose hearts are set upon God. We have perfect. So God is ready to forgive those who, are, who genuinely repent. God is able. Remember the title of this message? God is able to turn your mess into a message if you cry out to God like Samson did. For another example, the prodigal son. Remember the story of the prodigal son who left home, turned his back on his father, and his father's blessings, protection, and provision, his pres father's, father's presence, and wasted his father's wealth. But the Bible says, you know, he, he tasted the world and saw the wickedness of the world. He, 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 he became empty. He lost everything. But he came to himself. He repented and went back home. And his father received him with joy and threw a party. My son, that was not now. And that's how, God's, uh, that's how God wants to receive us. We joy when we come, we repent us. The Bible says there's joy among the angels. And there's joy in God. He wants to receive you. That's what our God is like. Our God is love. Condemnation comes from the devil. He wants to see, he wants, to, wants us to stay down. Our God, God convicts us of sin so that we can come to him. Satan condemns us so that we can um, um, turn away from the Lord uh, and be removed from his presence. So no matter how down and out you are, no matter how far you've gone from him, when we repent and humble ourselves, he will exalt us. He will turn our mess into a miracle. Hallelujah. The Bible says in James 4, he said, um, he said come close to God. Now let me read from verse 7, James 4, verse 7. He said, so humble yourself before God. Resist the devil. and will That is, we have to, first of all, humble ourselves. Because you can't be bad in the devil if you are living in sin. You need to humble yourself and come to God. And we'll, he will lift you up in due time. Just wait for him in Jesus' name. For if God has spoken, spoken to you as a Christian, you need to rise up now. You know, come out in the name of Jesus and stand up. Look up to God. Hallelujah. Stand up for Jesus. Yes. Yes, look to him we, 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 um, in faith and he will deliver you. But if you're not a Christian, you know, you're already lost the battle. You, you're already, you're, you know, you're, you, you, you're already, you know, um, condemned. Your, your eternal destiny is hell. And if God is speaking to you, 
you know, and God is speaking to you. You know, he wants you to repent. God has no pleasure in the end of the wicked. He wants people to be saved. That's why he sent his son. So if you've not given your life to Christ, and you know God is speaking to you, why don't you pray this prayer? The Bible says, now is the time. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if that is you, and God is speaking to you, why don't you pray this prayer? As the Bible teaches us. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess I have sinned against you. Please forgive me. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross. I believe he rose again from the dead. I confess him as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me, O oh Lord. And help me to live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. I may have said that prayer, and if we're coming to the family of God, I need to go. Want you to grow in your faith, so you need to uh, to join a church that that leaves the Bible. You need to 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 read your Bible. You need to talk to God, as I'm talking to you. You need to share your faith. Tell someone what what has happened to you, and you will grow. Keep on listening, in Jesus. So before I go, leave you all with this prayer, because God will loves you and God wants to bless you. I say, may God bless you all and protect you. May God look upon you with his favor and be gracious upon you. May God look upon you, you know, with a smile on his face and give you peace in the mighty name of Jesus. So God bless you. Yes, may God help you. May God, may God strengthen you. May God keep you from stumbling and present you faultless in his presence. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. See you same time. Please. watching Faith World TV. Faith World TV, changing the world with the Word of God.